السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بإذن الله today we'll be speaking about a topic that's quite important it's important to understand it has many different angles and that is the topic of dealing with differences how do we differ with people giving our opinions in every little argument or where there's anybody who's challenging us or at times is it better to just move and carry on with what you are doing assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how are you shaykhna alhamdulillah how are you alhamdulillah i think uh, my screen is off once again right <laughs> yeah Yes. 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 Today's topic is a topic that can be addressed from many angles. It's a topic that, you know, there's many different ways when we look at it and how to deal with it. And that's the topic of dealing with differences. So usually if we look at our differences, usually it's because people have a problem or there's some sort of thing that they are not in agreement with. So how do they disagree? What should they do when they disagree? Also, is it always that we are right or we are wrong? I think maybe if we start off by looking at this topic and say that, why do people disagree? If somebody has a disagreement with you or a difference with you, it's usually due to three things. One is maybe you have made a mistake genuinely. That you've done something wrong and they completely differ with you. whether it's your ideology or something you did it could be in the in the religion or it could be in a worldly affair let's say you're both running a business and somebody thinks that we should have this strategy and other things we should have this strategy so it could be genuinely because you made a mistake or you've done something wrong or it could be that maybe they see it differently and you see it differently so that could be something else a third is when it comes to differences that end up going further and spilling over into bad blood and enmity that's usually because people uh, they are either jealous of you and they are looking for some sort of fame and recognition or it's to do with wealth people usually fight in this world because of two reasons they're fighting for fame and status or they're fighting for wealth yes uh, i i think a lot of the problems that are going on uh especially on the internet etc you see differences and people fighting and arguing about it a lot of it is happening solely because they see things from a different angle or different perspective and if you look at the actual problem and you know boil it down to its crux so to speak you come to find uh that there's not much of a difference in the first place but it's the way that they're both looking at it and uh, because they don't even really want to listen to each other properly they uh, eventually just end up you know saying things to each other calling each other names and this is where the the, the problem lies and uh, for me i i feel that this is currently in reality this is what's going on like the problems are being blown out of proportion it's not even such a serious problem and when dealing with them they don't know how to go about it so then eventually you find that it blows out of proportion uh, what you mentioned with the uh, internet it's also i think applicable to real life we find when people are differing yes we mentioned that there's sometimes where you differ with somebody you have a problem with somebody and definitely you you both in disagreement you disagree with him he disagrees with you or he's your enemy so to say and he completely doesn't he doesn't even know what you want to stand for that we'll get to that later we're talking about things a lot of problems even in the house in marriage in business in the deen a lot of the times people are looking at an angle that you are allowed to have more than one interpretation and one person is looking at it from the front so to say and the other is looking at it from a different angle from the back or from the left or from the right and what usually happens we find is because we feel that we learned it this way so it's this way or we heard it first in this manner and it's hard to reprogram our brains so usually it's because we're not looking at the whole, at the bigger picture wallahi that's so true uh, in in addition to that the the circumstance that you're in as well influences your thought process so 
you might be going through a certain problem and or a certain circumstance in your personal life and then you deal with someone and you have a difference with them and what you're going through influences the way that you deal with this person as well. So your emotions come into play, uh, the way that you've dealt with or the problem that you've just come out of influences the way you're going to deal with the person that you, you, you're talking to. Yes, because ultimately it, it, you have an interpretation of their actions. So if somebody did something, you in a certain state, you're angry, you might see it as they're attacking you, they're speaking about you, or it's just a, a general message. And maybe because something's happened, you interpret it as this person is he's, he's attacking me or he's differing with me. Yeah, yeah. You know, when it comes to WhatsApp and uh, you know, the, these, these social media, let's not mention specific apps. So let's put that aside and say it's not WhatsApp alone, but it's, you know, generally the, the messaging apps that you have out there that facilitate conversation between people. When you're talking by text, sometimes it, your emotion doesn't come across in that text. So a person doesn't understand exactly where you are and they may read the text to be different. Uh, their emotions at the time define how they feel about that text. So I think that's also, it's also something that we can bring to light. Yes, and uh, Shekhana, we spoke about some of the differences people may have. Now, when it comes to dealing with these differences, I think there's a lot of ways to look at it again. Maybe if we look at the people who we are actually differing with. So if we start with the home first in the home, whether it's with your wife or whether it's with your parents or whether it's with your children. Here, this type of difference, we have to look at it. What type of difference is it? Usually more than 90% of the time, as we mentioned, it's a difference in perception, a difference in this person wants to do it with method A and this person wants to do it in method B. How do we now deal with this? Remember in your house or something, it's not like the internet where you can now switch them off for the next year or the next three months, etc. How do you think the best way is to deal about it? Should they sit down and uh, try and give each one of them a chance, keeping calm? What should they do? What do you think? This is the most valid and most important part of the conversation because, you know, we, we all know the problems that are out there, but the solutions to them is what people should now uh, focus on. And I think, you know, in certain circumstances, it's important to sit down and thrash it out, talk about it, see what's happening, listen to each side and see what each side has to say. But sometimes you've got to deal with it in a slightly different matter where in a slightly different manner where you, you either send a text message or you get, you know, make a phone call. And I think what's important and what's what I found to be the main reason why things blow out of proportion is to keep emotions in check. So if you can keep your emotions in check, even if one side, you can control what's on your side, so you try and keep your emotions in check, then this helps in dealing with the problem altogether. So you're more likely to come out with the result. Uh, whereas if you just you know, go at each other and you end up both getting angry, you at each other's uh, faces, then there's more, most likely you're not going to come out of that with a, a result. And you know, there's that hadith of the Prophet Wasallam where two men were shouting at each other. And he said, had they just sought refuge from shaitan, you know, it would have helped the situation. So they, they were shouting at each other and they were going at each other. Why? There's no benefit from emotions running high or there's very, very few times or on very few occasions do you find actual benefit from emotions running high. Yes, usually when our emotions boil over and then there's different types of people. So uh, there's those who want to sit down immediately and let's speak about it and sort it out. There's those who may need to sit on it for an hour or two before they can even listen or hear about it. So you've got to see the type of person you're dealing with. What's uh, At the end of the day, we as Muslims, we must try and be the better party. Yes, it's easy to say, but... Uh, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants tawfiq to those who are able to carry it out. So you've also got to look at the people who you are dealing with. Another interesting point I, I read the other day, one of the top psychologists, they were saying, and these therapists, when it comes to marriage, etc., they said a lot of divorce problems, if people could just solve one thing, 
then a lot of these problems, marital problems, problems with friends, they were mainly speaking about marriage, would be solved. And that is to basically to give you a, a bit of an intro to this. They say that when you have an experience in life, you are putting something in your mind. So your mind, you've got like a bank, so to say. So you're depositing these experiences. These experiences eventually become stories and then beliefs. So you now believe this. So for example, let's say you've had a problem with your wife. You, it's, it's been a major problem. Something happened. No matter who's right or wrong, usually people start telling themselves that, okay, when it comes to this topic, uh, my wife is a problem when it comes to this, or she will never understand this. So because of an experience, you've told yourself a story, you've now developed this. And they say you eventually, if you carry on doing this, you have a memory bank of monsters, basically uh, monsters as in bad memories. So every time something happens, you now go straight to this false belief. If you don't cut it and you don't check it immediately, this grows and grows and grows. And that's where you find a lot of people then when something small happens, all the baggage from the past comes out and then there is, you know, a world war, so to say. What a, what a valid point. A very, very valid point here. Yeah. You, you mentioned that how... One of the ways, yes. yeah? go on, one go of on. the ways or the best way in which you can help yourself with this is start erasing those, uh, these thoughts. If you can't erase them and they there... Every time you want to speak, don't speak based on these thoughts and these bad experiences. Speak something good, speak something good, so you can erase what's happened. And every time something new happens, you're able to take it, you know, you are level with it. You're not starting already from having 10 major problems and getting to the 11th. No, you're taking, you're taking it on an individual basis. Yes, and I think that's what justice dictates because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, that even if it is against your own self or your parents or those who are close to you. So letting go of the relationship that you have with them in that particular situation or with yourself uh, to start with in that particular situation is important in order to be able to see the light in the first place, to see whether you're right, you're wrong, uh, what you can do to resolve it. And this becomes the hardest when we're doing it for ourselves because that's when now, when it dawns upon you sometimes that, you know, I'm wrong in this situation. That's when justice comes out that, okay, you know, let me deal with this in the right manner. I, I should apologize here and just stamp out my ego. Uh, whereas, you know, in, in uh, most cases, people find themselves, or in a lot of cases, people find themselves you know, defending them, their own ego because it's actually a defense of their own ego because why? My, myself, I can't be seen as small in this argument or in this debate or in dealing with this problem. Yes, and what you mentioned is also another way of looking at it. So we spoke about dealing with it when you uh, have a difference with somebody else. Also, when it comes to right and wrong, there's going to be times where you're right. Obviously, you won't be arguing with somebody unless you feel you're right and they feel they're right. And you both have opposing views. Let's say you've only, you can only do what's in your hands. So there'll be times that you are right. You see it clear cut. And there'll be times that you are wrong. You may not see it. You probably won't see it. You might see it after a little while. Sheikh, now when it comes to these arguments, usually people, we all, it's human nature. We feel that we are right. Maybe there should be a way for us to actually in every problem to look at ourselves and think that, okay, maybe, just maybe we are wrong in this and evaluate before, you know, going on the offensive or before trying to get this, part, this person to rectify themselves. So I think that's an important point you mentioned that we can look at it from the way, let's say you are right and or you are wrong. If you're wrong, obviously, you've got to look into yourself. You're not always going to see that you're wrong. So maybe have a procedure or a way of handling your matters. You have an argument with your wife or your business partner or your child. You've got a problem. Look at it first and think, how could I be wrong in this? Or why are they thinking or having a problem with me in this issue? Yes, wallahi, that's, that's so, so true. 100% exactly as you've mentioned it. You know, uh, also we find certain situations where people are not necessarily wrong. It's not a situation where there's wrong and right. 
but there's just different ways of doing something. So you differ on the way to do it and all of a sudden there's an argument, it boils over. So rather than letting it get there, understand that this person sees things differently. Either I step away or I take control and they step away or, you know, something of that nature. So I, th I think the most important thing in, in such a situation is to realize how to deal with it. And the way to do that, like every situation is unique. Uh, so you've got to judge it properly and, and see whether walking away will benefit you or staying there and talking it out, see whether the person is reasonable, you can come to terms and understand each other. Or at times you may want them, you may ask them to, to leave the situation alone. Now, these are not the only ways to deal with the problem, but uh, I think each situation is unique as well. So, you know, you've got to judge it properly. You can't just uh, have one fixed method of doing things every time. Yes, and if we look at the side, let's say you feel that, you know, you are right in this instance. How would somebody go about this? I think that Allah knows best. Obviously, we hear in these things, if we're not really speaking about the Quran and the Sunnah as per se or something concrete, we're usually giving our opinions. People can write whether they agree or disagree. Maybe it's something we will also benefit. I think that if a person feels they are right, and uh, that's a lot of the times, You've also got to look at the relationship at stake. You've got to look at the person you are dealing with. Are you seeing them every day? Are you dealing with them every day? Sometimes if it's not something that's, if it's something, as we mentioned, different perspectives or different methods in doing something, we've got to uh, save that relationship at times and don't escalate it maybe at a better time. Uh, we say that let's dissect what actually happened. Maybe you saw it this way, I saw it this way. Let's move on. If you are right, at times you may find that you will have to say that you are wrong, even though you are not wrong. And you may have to say sorry, or you may be the first person saying sorry. And if it's not yes. a principle that you're going against, if it's not a principle, so you're not saying that, okay, uh, Allah, somebody did something completely wrong and now you both disagree and you say, okay, he did it right, but we all know it's wrong. Maybe he stole or maybe he did something completely out. We're not saying change uh, your principle of right and wrong. We are saying that at times you will be, you feel you will be right with somebody and, uh, you know, you've just got to act like you are wrong or say sorry and move on just to save your relationship. Yes, yes, wallahi. That's why the hadith says that I guarantee a person a place in Jannah, the one who leaves an argument, even though he may be right. So you're in kanam hiqqa. He has the right in that argument, but he knows that there's no benefit in carrying on this argument. He leaves it. He leaves it and he walks away. Why? There's no point in, in arguing here. It's just going to become something bigger. It's a minor issue. Let it go and let's move on. Uh, Having said that, it's also important to not always do this because like you mentioned, certain issues a person has stolen or a person has oppressed someone else. And now you say, no, you're right. What you're doing is actually empowering them in that uh, wrongdoing of theirs. So they begin to believe that we're absolutely right here and, you know, I can do this again. So in that case, you know, s speaking about it is of fundamental importance. Shekhana, coming, let's come to the internet where you have differences with people on the internet. Uh, what happens sometimes is people who call you out or pick on you. We mentioned if you've made a mistake, obviously, if somebody criticizes you, look at how you may be wrong. And at times you may be right. Usually you would find that if you had to address such issues or you had to comment, it just carries on and on and on. That's why we, what do you think would be the best when, you know, somebody's just picking on you with this social bullying online or this cyber bullying, so to say, where people are just being picked on because you fat or you thin or you tall or you short or you're from a different country. How do you deal with those trolls, so to say, on the internet? You know, I, I've always had this approach and this is just my personal approach where I take things head on and I don't believe in uh, leaving such people be because that when you do it, you know, when you leave them and you just uh, keep quiet, then they continue and it becomes worse. It's just like bullying out in the open in the schoolyard. These people are just big bullies. Uh, so what they do, if you, if you encourage your child to remain silent and cower away, what will happen is they'll pick on him more and more until he, he, you know, astaghfirullah, sometimes you find children who actually take their lives 
So it gets quite serious. Time, yes, yes, a lot of the time. So I think in that case, you, you've got to teach the person that, no, stand up for yourself and speak out. And or, or in some cases, like when it comes to physical abuse, then the child needs to learn how to physically protect themselves as well. Um, so not always do you walk away from the problem. So, uh, and, and this is how I, I deal with, I try to deal with issues, you know, head on. That, no, hold on. Uh, I believe that I haven't done something wrong here. Why? What's the problem? And then if I see that there's no absolutely no benefit in continuing and it's just going to cause further problems, then I'll walk away. But by that time, the person realizes that, you know what? This guy has a line and don't cross that line. So, so it's, it's good to have that with you as well, because otherwise people just trample all over you. Yeah, I think uh, I resonate with you. I uh, may be a little bit different. I agree totally that if you've got children or somebody's, you know, bullying, and especially when it comes to children, they don't really understand life as yet. Small things, they obviously feel that, that these are major things and it may cause them to take their lives or do something bad or give up their money or be beaten, etc. Here, you've also got to tell your child that, you know, when it comes to the internet, yes, you might be using uh, your phone or you, even when you go to school, people may be troubling you, bullying you. I was speaking to somebody else the other day and they were speaking about how through their childhood or in their childhood, they had a very difficult time. There was trauma everywhere, especially at school. And this child felt like, you know, if I say something, these bullies would get worse. So we've got to teach our children that when it comes to things like that, come and speak up, come home. Don't fear what other people will do at the school. And, you know, we've got to address those issues head on, as you mentioned. As for when it comes to uh, people trolling you online, maybe you somebody who's got a, a vision, an idea. Firstly, as we mentioned, look how you may be wrong. If you feel that you're not wrong and people are, have just judged you, they're picking on you, they don't really want to give nasiha and sincere advice. So to say, personally, I wouldn't take it head on. I would just leave it and carry on, probably use the block feature and move on. I think that's how I would deal with it. Yes, yes. Yes, I would also do, do the same in certain, uh, certain circumstances. But uh, having said that, like, you know, when, when you just keep doing this and it becomes a trend, then it empowers the, the rest of them to come after you. That, yes, yeah, this guy, he just cowers away. So it empowers them to feel that we can say anything or do anything. And what happens eventually is that they come out and they start making videos of their own. And this especially happens uh, amongst the, the, the scholars and amongst the students of knowledge. And this is something that I, I don't think we should cower away from in this uh, discussion as well, you know, because it's becoming so common where this one talks against that one and that one talks against that one and the public is caught in between. Why? Because he's got his followers, these people have got their followers. And like you mentioned, you know, they can't remove the fact that we align ourselves with this person. So it becomes an influencing factor. And they immediately, you know, attack the other person. No, it doesn't matter what he's saying, even though there may be some truth to it. Now, I'm not saying it's always the case, but there may be some truth to what he's saying. They won't even consider that. Why? Because th this is my sheikh. He can't be wrong. And uh, the same happens, you know, with the other side. They, they align themselves with that person. They have hatred for the person. And they take all of the, they remove the conversation completely. And they start thinking about the emotions for that person and it becomes about, you know, issuing, you know, words and just saying things against each other and absolutely no benefit. When I look at it and I think of these situations, I really feel that there's people who want the downfall of Islam and the Muslimin who, have, who are behind all of this. Because if you look at the crux of the problem, it's not major, it's not a serious problem. And even if it is, there's a way in dealing with it, not in the manner that's causing so much harm to Islam and the Muslimin as a whole. So that, that's something that, you know, just it's, it's been playing on my mind for a while. Actually. You know, you, I heard a powerful point the other day and somebody was mentioning that when you want to do something in life, you want to establish yourself. It's like you're making your building. You obviously want to be the best. You want to build the biggest building. A lot of people translate success as being you build your building a little bit 
and then you go to try and break everybody else's building. This one did this, and that one did this, and pick on this one, pick on this one, pick on this one. And you find that you don't grow. That's 95% or more of the people are doing this way. You want to get up at the expense of somebody else. Come from a place of abundance. You can build your building as high as you want with somebody else also building. You can make money and do business with somebody else also making money and doing business. You can do your da'wah as long as it's correct. You doing it as well as somebody else also doing it and so many others doing it. So we, we've got to come from a place of abundance, not a place of scarcity, not feeling that for me to get higher, I have to trample or jump on top of this one, put him down so I can get higher and bash everybody. And you would find that a lot of people who are successful, we would call successful, obviously Allah judges, but those who've got a following online, those who do good, you would find that a lot of them, what they did is they spoke about what's right. They, they built, 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 built. Yes, they may have their mistakes, but now you starting from the bottom, you don't start by going to this one's mistake and attacking and attacking and attacking and attacking. That's not how you get there. And that's not how they got there and got that respect. So there's a way of doing things. Wallahi, so true, so true. You know, there's people who, uh, as you mentioned, they feel like they need to step on others in order to achieve something. Yet, I think that's the complete opposite of success. Because the fact that you need to step on someone for everybody else to see you, you're doing the wrong thing for people to see you. And this, this is... Uh, okay, a bit off topic, but this is what I was, I, I made a post about recently to say that, you know, people are making all sorts of videos out there. It's a problem where they're doing anything and everything, foolishness, stupidity. And some people, they, they're doing stupid things, literally, so to speak. There's no other word to, to put for it. And the guy is famous, so he feels happy. He feels like, oh, okay, wow, I, I've achieved something. You haven't. You've achieved, you're actually stupidly famous. And that's what's important, you know, that it, it's stupid, your stupidity that you've enhanced to make people uh, see you as a famous person. Now, this is slightly off topic, but, you know, coming back to our point that trampling on someone in order to get up means you're actually justifying the means for an end. And the end is not even glorious because ultimately you'll get to be known as a person who became famous solely because he attacked others. So. Why, why do you have to do that? It means you have nothing to offer in and of yourself, which basically is untrue because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you that opportunity. Use your, your goodness, to use the power that Allah has given you to spread something positive. And where you disagree, you don't always have to be the person to stand up and say that, you see here, this is, I feel is wrong because it's most 99% of the time, it's an issue where there is serious allowance for uh, difference, you know, difference of opinion. So why should you then stand up? And even if you do it, then do it in the most respectful manner. And I feel in today's world, we shouldn't even be uttering names that this person said this and that person said that. Refute the ideology if you must. Say that, look, this ideology is wrong. Uh, but to say that this person said it on such and such a date and because of that, he's a dog is insulting. It's wrong. Why, why are you doing that? You know, it means you want to take down the person and the individual. You have something against them personally. So, uh, you know, especially when it comes to insults, I find it very difficult to stomach. You know, when we hear that Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala would come into an argument hoping, and I don't know if this is 100% true, this athar, or what I've heard, is that Imam al-Shafi'i would hope and wish that the truth would come out on the uh, tongue of the, his opponent. So the truth would come out, he would make dua, or he would hope within himself that the truth would come out on the, on the tongue of his opponent, opponent. Regardless of whether this is true or not, or attributed to Imam al-Shafi'i, the lesson is powerful. That, you know, he wasn't cared about who's right and wrong, but he was cared about the truth and that's where we've lost the plot completely. It's, it's now about egos and right and, you know, I'm right, you're wrong. Come on, hold on, guys. What's right and what's wrong is of importance, not who and where it came from. Sheikh you know, we had mentioned a, a few ways of dealing with this when we're speaking about online trolls, etc. I know I may have a different way. You may have a different way of doing it. But I, I want to ask you one question. For example, I feel 
that if I'm going to deal with this one and this one and this one, it eventually becomes a wave that what you set out to do, you then distract it and you do something else. So if somebody who, that's why I feel not to address these issues even, but let's say somebody who wants to tackle them head on, where do you draw that balance where you find that, okay, if I carry on with this, there is minimal return or I'm being distracted. How, how do you put that into perspective? Because then you find a lot of times that, yeah, not all people can stomach it. So let's say somebody needs to speak out. Where do you draw the line or you say, you know what, now this is taking too much of my time or it's wasting my life or I haven't put anything beneficial out there? When do you take stock? Well, that's, that's a very, very good question that I ask myself, I ask myself uh, a lot of the time. So it's something that I think of that. Should I respond here or shouldn't I? And a lot of the times you find that uh, the person who is speaking, if that person is someone unknown, not famous, not well known. When I say not famous, not known amongst the people. They may actually be doing it to lure you in. And because you have a certain followership or you have people following, they lure you in and now all of a sudden you're in there and you're arguing with this person and you, you've put him up on a pedestal. And your response to him means it has made him the happiest person in the world. Because now you've responded to him, you've given him importance. Whereas he had absolutely no importance before. And I pass by posts, uh, you know, of sometimes people that I, I've befriended at times on, online. And I pass by the posts and I see that they're mentioning something toxic. They have no, from what's apparent, it doesn't seem very clear whether they have a good intention or not. And I just, uh, you know, you just ignore it. And you see that most people ignore those people. So the minute you respond to them, you're giving them some sort of importance. So in that case, cut them out, leave them to one side. But where the person is a, a, a person of stature and he's spoken and he's attacking you, in this case, make one response, clear, cut, open, explain yourself, leave it and walk away. Because if you don't respond and you don't speak out, then this will happen again and it will happen again and again and again until the point where you won't be able to remain silent any longer. So if you draw the line early, it's, it's better that way. That Hold on, guy. You've said something here, but this is what I have to say about it, and I'm walking away from this. And you have to have the strength to walk away because he will come back with a response, and you might want to respond as well, but walk away from it because, like you said, if you continue again and again and again, then what happens is your whole life becomes about that. And Shaitan wants you in that as well. Why? Because now he's no longer doing the productive work that he was engaged in. So, you know, let him, let him get involved in that which is of no importance or less importance, and he's not benefiting the people. So, yes, sometimes, you know, they, they, it does require a response. But like you said, 90% of the time you'll find yourself in a situation where if I speak out against this person, you know, there's going to be no benefit. And this happens especially on comments, you know, where you have a comment and a person's made. It's trivial. Don't make it, don't make it bigger than it is, you know. Uh, so that, that's where I try and di discern between the certain, uh, the, the different cases that are out there uh, where people, not that it's happened to me a lot or anything, but I, I think about these things and wonder as to how I would deal with them, how I have sometimes dealt with them. Uh, like you mentioned, I've blocked people. I've just banned people from a page at times solely because you can see that this person doesn't really want to engage in beneficial dialogue, but just wants to attack. So in that case, I, I can't be bothered with them, you know? And also uh, another interesting thing is, you know, how the saying goes where you live by something, you'll die by something. So a lot of times people who end up on this, then after they've uh, beaten everybody else, then they start fighting amongst themselves. So we've got to, uh, you know, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firstly to protect us. Secondly, accompany people who've actually learned knowledge, who see how difficult it's been, how much time they've put in, how they've learned. And you will then appreciate how when somebody makes a mistake, there's a way to correct them. There's a way not to correct them. Another important thing is that we live in a time where this has never happened before. You can say something uh, in Africa and it will be heard in Europe or elsewhere in the world, the whole world. So yes. we've also got to now 
deal with this in a way where it's completely different to previous times. We're not saying don't say what's right is right. We are saying that at times your words, especially when you become so specific and laser focused on a certain person where you never even understand where, they, where they're coming from, what excuse they may have had, you cause a fitna for yourself and the rest of the ummah. So we've got to realize that this type of word travels fast. It can cause major problems. And it's, we are living at a time, the last 10 or 20 years roughly, is where we've got these tools that they can go from here to there. And this message can get go everywhere within a few minutes. So we've got to be very, very careful. And that's why in one of the hadith, it's mentioned that a person who will be punished, as far as I remember, it's to do with the punishment of the grave. Uh, one of the people who are punished the most is a person who, who speaks a lie and this lie spreads everywhere around the world and we can imagine it now because of this uh, social media. Yes, wallahi, and even, uh, you know, uh, it is enough of a sin for a person to speak everything that he he hears or to pass on everything that he hears uh, is also of importance in today's world where you've got the forward button and people just like to forward messages, etc., Think first, is there benefit in this? Should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? And that, that's of utmost importance because like you've mentioned, you have a problem, local problem here in this part of the world, uh, maybe like the southern tip of, uh, you know, America. And on in Europe, people are hearing of it within minutes or they're seeing what's happening within minutes. You've got others who go online and for the wrong reason, again, they want to put uh, a live video up of what's the problem that's going on what what benefit will it be of to the people in Europe to know what's going on there? Is it going to help the problem in any way? So so why did you do it? You know, that's the question that person's got to ask themselves. And it's become, you know, it's good. These tools are good, but it's a double-edged sword. You can It can also cause a lot of harm and problems as well. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Sheikh, now we've had a good session. Is there anything else you'd like to add or maybe we could recap what we mentioned? Alhamdulillah, I think uh, it was it was an excellent session and uh, there, there was a lot of, uh, you know, things that we discussed that were of utmost importance. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it was lovely discussing and sitting and talking. Uh, I believe uh, Sheikh Mufti has joined us on the, on the live as well earlier. MashaAllah, it was lovely to see him uh, joining as well. It's uh, nice to, uh, MashaAllah, you know, just to acknowledge his presence on here, subhanAllah. MashaAllah, I think a lesson we learned from him, we, he always says that there'll be so many people who say things at times and you'll be tempted to reply just a lot of the time, just hold yourself, hold yourself a lot of the times. Yeah, sometimes where you have to make something clear that this didn't happen or you speak, but it's a lot of the times people just want that three minutes of fame or five minutes of fame and it's in the open, it's in the comments. Okay, you reply, let me reply, let me reply. So that's something to also ponder over. Basically, in a nutshell, what we spoke about today, we said that when you're differing with somebody, uh, there's a few ways to look at it. You can be right, you can be wrong. We spoke about how to deal with it. Obviously, look at how you may be wrong in the first place. Also, there's some relationships which are worth keeping, which you cannot leave a person for you know, a month and a week etc., especially when it comes to your home and real people. Another thing when it comes to the internet, that's a whole different ball game. We've got uh, cyber bullying, etc. We're saying, speak out, tell somebody if you're being bullied, we should tell our children uh, to, they, our children should be able to approach us when they have problems, whether it's in school, whether it's in life. Otherwise, they go to somebody else who they can confide in. Also, how to, uh, you know, protect our time as well as, uh, as Sheikh Ibrahim said, not letting people get away with things. We've also spoke about that and quite a bit more. Yes, alhamdulillah, there was a lot that was discussed. You recapped it beautifully, Sheikh. Uh, wallahi, there, there was someone who was saying that when I uh, respond, sometimes I apologize when I'm wrong and then I lose my self-respect. And I think that, uh, you know, the loss of self-respect shouldn't be something that you should focus on when you when you apologize because the hadith says that you know that it's only a person is only raised in 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 status when they uh, you know uh, forgive 
or as as far as I'm sure the meaning is that they forgive. So you're you're raised in status. You shouldn't feel that me apologizing has put me down, but actually you've won against your ego. So you you should be honored in the, in such a situation. And here in this situation, after that's what the human beings, you then put yourself in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You feel that, oh Allah, I did this for you. And as Allah says, فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ You know, whoever forgives, makes up, etc. Then the reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, what's interesting is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this problems that occur between people, also the whispers of shaitan, وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِفْ بِاللَّهِ When it's something from shaitan, immediately seek or seek the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Later on in those few verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about a certain group of people who they do this, they hope in the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but these are very few. And he says, وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ Basically saying, the people who have this trait, uh, it's, all, it's obviously from the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he has granted them patience and they will have a great reward. So remember, first and foremost, you're doing it because you're hoping for a reward in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's at times where there's somebody who you can speak with. You, later on, you, you can address it to say, you know what, I feel I'm always saying sorry and I feel like this, etc. Maybe that's a way of looking at it. Yes, wallahi, of utmost importance. Even that last bit that you mentioned where... People feel like I'm always saying sorry. It's important to raise that as well because sometimes, you know, they, they genuinely don't have a way to put themselves across even though they may be right and they end up saying sorry. And so it's very important, yes. Yes, the ayah I wanted to mention is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ So when it comes to human beings, try and do what's best. Obviously, we can preach about it. Doing it is the difficult part and requires tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ Basically, if you do that which is good, and you be the better party بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ The one who you have this enmity with, you'll find that بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ You become close, or we could say good and close friends and allies, so to say. And then he says, وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا Only people who are patient have this trait and they are able to do it and they will have a great reward. Yes, we can preach it, but that's a level where uh, it's difficult. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that level. Absolutely. You know, uh, now that you mentioned it, فَعْبِلَّتِ هِيَ أَحْسَنْ which is responding with that which is better, basically. So, you know, the result can actually be that this person whom you have a great enmity with becomes a close friend. So, subhanAllah, there was a sheikh, and I won't take his name. Uh, mashallah, he was talking about how, you know, he had some sort of uh, disagreement with someone on the road, so to speak. You know, something was committed in terms of an, a traffic, you know, error, you could say, or misjudgment. And this person behind him became very angry, and he, he started, you know, pursuing him, etc. He was going at, at a fast speed behind him. And when they came up to the traffic light, he says, Wallahi, I just blew, he was a man, and he, you know, it was a man in the other car, and he said, I just blew him a kiss, so to speak. <laughs> and he said the guy couldn't, he had no response but to start laughing. So imagine all that pent-up anger just burst out in a laugh, and, and that, was the, <laughs> that was the way that he diffused the whole situation and turned it around. So subhanAllah, idfa billati hi ahsan. You know, respond with that which is better. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the ability. Shaykhana, is there anything else you'd like to mention before we end? No, Jazakallah khair. It's been a lovely session. Jazakallah khair for having me on the, on the live uh, with you. Alhamdulillah, it's been lovely chatting and I hope there's been a benefit. Ameen wa iyaakum. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all goodness. Shaykhana, inshallah, next week we see you again. Bi amanillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته